Hi everyone, welcome to the Winter 2020-21 Dairyfield Athletic Awards Assembly. This is the second of three assemblies designed to honor the successes of our players, our coaches, and teams. But before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the coaches who gave so freely of their time this winter and put countless hours of effort, energy, and passion into each of their teams to give you, the athletes, the very best possible experience. This winter, as we know, was unlike anyone that we've ever had before. I want to take a moment to recognize the incredible sacrifice that our basketball and ice hockey players made by going virtual to participate in the sports that they love. From my standpoint, it was truly, truly inspiring to see, you, see all of you get to play the sports that you love, knowing the sacrifices that you had to make. It was really inspirational. I got to watch our athletes compete on the Nordic and Alpine courses, the basketball courts, the ice hockey rinks, push themselves to new limits in s and and yoga. Your coaches were truly dedicated and we're lucky to have them here. If you haven't already done so, please take a moment to thank each of them. They truly gave everything they had to make this season happen for you. With that in mind, I'd also like to give a thank you to our school leaders, Dr. Carter and Ms. Grodman, and the many others who spent countless hours with me to help develop a safe winter athletic experience for everyone to enjoy. We're also wanna, we'd also be neglect if we didn't thank Mr. Latiri for all his work behind the scenes to keep our athletes on the courts, on the courses, and making sure that all the games and practices ran smoothly. I also wanna thank Mr. DeYoung and Ms. Branch and the entire tech department for helping us put together our first ever season of live streaming games. It was incredible to see all the excitement and all the thank yous of parents and grandparents and everyone else who tuned in to watch our games this winter. We really appreciate your support. Uh, I'd also like to thank our buildings and grounds crew for the countless hours that they put in to help keep our grounds safe and our school open and allow our athletes to play. And finally, I want to thank our parents and all of our students for the understanding and patience and support of our athletes throughout the entire winter. I know it wasn't the winter that we wanted it to be, but it was truly so much fun to see all of you compete. And I appreciate all of your, all of your understanding and patience during this time. As a reminder, in this video, each coach will have a few minutes to honor their teams and give an individual prestigious Class of 70 award. This award is presented to the Dairyfield student athlete on each varsity squad. These are individuals who have been members of their particular squad for two or more seasons. They must have shown through enthusiasm, endeavor, and selfless interest to have made the most of their natural ability and improved play and performance. With that said, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to welcome Coach Cheatham to get us started here with girls basketball. Hi, my name is Courtney Cheatham and I'm the girls varsity basketball coach. This is my first season at Dairyfield and despite the craziness the pandemic has caused, it's been one of my favorite seasons as a coach. Our roster includes some of the best kids I have ever coached. They're eager to learn, they always put forth their best effort and they treat our program, our opponents, and each other with respect. We always talk about two things we can control as student athletes, which are our effort and our attitude. The basketball season runs from, from Thanksgiving to mid-March, so often a longer season inevitably brings a time when lack of effort or poor attitude needs to be addressed. But not with this season, not with this team, not this season, not once. 
These athletes gave up being in school in person to participate. They wore masks while sprinting and breathing heavily, and they never complained. I commend them, and I'm honored to have had the opportunity to coach each of them. Before every game, we take time to reflect on our gratitude for having the opportunity to play this season. We like to send a special thank you to those who helped make it happen. Chris Hetler, Susan Grodman, Dr. Carter, Lainey Shaughnessy, Derek Letary, and Jill Roberts. We also appreciate all the parents, guardians, and teachers that went above and beyond to help our students excel while being virtual. Our team finished the regular season nine and four, but only one of those losses was to a divisional opponent, whom we beat two days later by 18 points. Overall, the team was ranked fourth out of 24 teams and lost in the regional finals to the eventual Division IV champion, Hinsdale. More importantly though, the team wrote the following goal at the beginning of the season. We strive to be a family dedicated to creating a new Dairyfield athletic community that is hardworking and passionate about girls basketball. This is founded in our culture, CLTR, which stands for communication, listening, transparency, and respect. These student athletes have faced numerous challenges this season, such as, but not limited to, wearing masks, injuries, weekly COVID tests, and attending school virtually away from classmates and friends. They are resilient and strong young women, and in my opinion, they have met and exceeded their goal. We have the right balance of youth and experience on our squad, and Dairyfield basketball is doing what they set out to do. This season, we had four seniors, Julia Martin, Captain Emmy Plage, Yelly Nikolenko, and Captain Shauna Lemmerys. Each senior brought their own special leadership. At this time, I want to commend our two 70s award winners, our two captains, Shauna Lemmerys and Emmy Plage. Shauna is a four-year starter and current captain of our team. She's been an All-State player and just received an award to be for honorable mention All-State even though her um, participation was limited this season due to a season-ending injury. She only played 64 minutes in the whole season, but still managed to score 45 points, which was highlighted by a three-point shot 19 seconds into her senior night, despite being injured and unable to fully participate. In addition, she did not let this injury keep her from being a valuable leader. She quickly stepped in as an assistant coach and had crucial feedback during games to help make us make some pivotal, pivotal adjustments. Ironically, Shauna was supposed to be my high school player in her hometown of Merrimack, which was my previous coaching position, so it's been extra special to have had the opportunity to finish her senior year together on the sidelines. I'm proud of you and so grateful to be your coach. Go wreak havoc, havoc at Roberts Wesleyan. Our co-award winner is senior captain Emmy Plage. Emmy is a menace to other teams, often drawing a box in one defense targeted to keep her from scoring, yet somehow she still managed to average 16 points per game. Emmy received, received first team All-State selection for Division IV girls basketball and also just received an award for the D4 Defensive Player of the Year. Wow. In addition to scoring, Emmy led our team in rebounds per game, steals per game, and blocks per game. Despite these impressive stats, Emmy remains hardworking and extremely humble. She never asks how many points she had because she's more concerned with the team's success. As mentioned before, she draws the attention of every team's top defender and often gets shoved, fouled, and triple teamed, but she always stays composed and never reacts or responds with anything but humility. Emmy will continue her basketball career at Skidmore College next year. We're excited to watch her play and know how lucky Skidmore is to have this true student athlete on their bench. Thank you to everyone for supporting our program. We hope to continue to make you proud as we are so proud to represent Dairyfield. Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Ed Mead, uh, head boys basketball coach here at Dairyfield. I wanna give uh, a couple recap our season. Just wanna give some thank yous, first of all, to uh, Chris Hetler, our athletic director. Thank you for your support always, Chris. Always much, very much appreciated. Derek Terry, our um, trainer. Derek um, always just does such a great job keeping everybody fit and um, keeping everybody moving. And uh, can't thank him enough. Just a great, great trainer. Um, to Bill Burke, my assistant coach on the varsity level, um, he's a talented young coach. Very fortunate to have Billy around. I uh, appreciate uh, everything he does in all aspects of the game and, and, uh, and how he helps us. So can't thank him enough. Uh, Russ, have, Russ, uh, uh, Russ Coward, our JV coach, uh, 
that I want to thank him uh, just for his experience and his uh, insight into the game. Um, does a great job as our GV coach, and I just want to thank him very much. Uh, so this was COVID season, obviously, and um, you know everybody had the same, pretty much the same obstacles that we had as far as restrictions and things like that. Um, so the only thing you really do in that situation is use it to your advantage. And I think we did that. Um, we had some young players this year who were able to step in and really help us out and really matured in the process and uh, ready for ready to step in for next season and uh, they got a chance to play. We played a pretty tough schedule. I kind of did that by design to get these guys ready for next season. Uh, we played some D3 teams, some D2 teams, and some of the top teams in D4. So predictably, we struggled a little bit at the start of the season. Um, and, you know, early in the season, the, the guys talked about um, some of the goals and some of our ideals that we wanted to pursue. And one of them was uh, uh, the three watchwords of intensity, unity, and selflessness. And that kind of sustained us through the hard times, especially early in the season when we were you know, struggling experience-wise and struggling trying to play a whole game with such a young team. And uh, but we kept falling back on that and, uh, and things like that that we had talked about, and that really helped us a lot. Um, but these guys really worked hard in the process also. I mean, I've never had a team that worked this hard before. Uh, they would come early uh, to practice and wait. Uh, always uh, looking for extra shooting, always looking for, you know, advice and things like that. And uh, I, like I said, I can't say enough. These guys really, really worked hard all season. And, um, and that paid off for us as we got into early February. We really, um, uh, we really started to do, do much better. And, and we were in, in games and with some really good teams. And uh, we finally won one against uh, Division II Bishop Brady uh, in February. And then again, we won against Epping, uh, our Division Four rival, uh, and that led us to the state tournament. Uh, and in the first round, we drew Holy Family, a team that we had lost to twice during the season, but they were close games. We lost to them twice. Um, but uh, you know, in, that, in the game against Holy Family, it was uh, the, the guys just uh, the intensity was just off the charts, and uh, they just um, that part of that hard work that we had put in all season really paid off. Really showed in this game. And, um, um, like I said, the intensity level and other coaches that had watched the game on um, on the live stream uh, echoed the same thing. Coach, you guys really just work so hard out there. And uh, we lost a close game to Holy Family. We pushed them right to the edge. And um, and uh, so I'm proud of them. I'm really proud of what the guys were able to do, uh, especially in that game. Um, and uh, so I'm very extremely proud of what we did this season and what we accomplished. And um, uh, going forward, we have we, we have two seniors. Um, uh, so most of the guys will be back next season. But our, to our two seniors, one co-captain, Jackson Snyder, and Charles Charles Renville, um, you'll be greatly missed. These guys, I had them for two years, and they definitely helped set the standard for the hard work and intensity and the type of team that you want to come become with them going forward. Um, so we're going to be, miss both of them uh, very much, both Charles and Jackson. Our team captains, Janai Cruz and Jack Snyder, um, also did a great, great, great job setting the standard uh, and being role models for the expectations we want to have and, uh, uh, and doing that for the younger players. Um, and our goal, one of our goals this season was to make the position of team captain more than just a ceremonial position, but something that, you know, you should strive for and, and really uh, uh, use your leadership ability to uh, to really help the team. And Jackson and Janai did a great job with that this year and, um, you know, mentoring the younger players and being and encouraging them. And it's very much appreciated. They did a fantastic job as team leaders. Um, the rest of the guys, those who I haven't mentioned, um, Kevin Fitch, Abe Winnett Noy, Griffin Johnson, John McDevitt, Riley, Marshall Riley, Logan Purvis, Jack Krasnoff, Christian Catrigata, and Thomas Fernando. Thank you so much for your, all your effort and your hard work this year. Uh, I'm upset that the upset and saddened that the season is, is over. I won't be seeing you every, every day, but we'll be seeing you next season and hopefully in for some uh, off season stuff this, this spring and summer. Uh, definitely look forward to that. We move on to our uh, 1970 award winner. 
And that goes to uh, senior co-captain Jackson Snyder. Uh, Jackson, to me, just epitomized the kind of effort that we were looking for from our team leaders this season and our players. Jackson uh, only has one speed, and that is flat out. Uh, to go along with that, uh, he brings a tremendous amount of passion and just a fierce competitive spirit uh, that is truly contagious to his teammates. Whenever we, when he wasn't in the game and uh, we were a little bit flat, we just able to put Jackson in. He would just just spark everybody, and uh, it's kind of that's the kind of energy he has and the kind of um, uh, intensity he has. And as far as being a team leader, um, always supportive and encouraging of his younger teammates. And, uh, I'm very proud of Jackson and we'll miss him tremendously. Well, that just about wraps it up. I know that Mr. Handler said he wants this to be about two to three minutes. I know I'm way over. I apologize for that. But um, but that's about it. Thank you very much. Hi there. This is Coach Fortier, the varsity coach for the varsity Alpine team. This season, I coached alongside Kathy Goldberg for a great year. I'd love to give a heartfelt nod to Amy Licata, who shared her passion and wisdom for the sport with us this year, along with Coach Hetler, whose heart is still with the Alpine team, though it comes second to lacrosse. We are honestly thrilled to have a season this year, no matter how it would work. We had so many successes and victories throughout the season and had a really large roster with some talented racers and some newcomers who made huge strides this season. The girls had a strong season throughout, finishing second at States, and the boys dominated the way with a tight finish in fourth against some really tough teams at States. Four of these athletes moved on to the meet of champions, and we couldn't be prouder. There's a quote by Bill Courtney that really resonates with me. The true measure of a man's character is not determined by how he wins but how he handles his failures. As a lifelong coach, sportsmanship and leadership have always been most important to me, more than victories. Long after the medals have been won or lost, these traits will carry these athletes throughout life. This year's recipients of the class of 70 displayed both leadership and sportsmanship and an incredible commitment to their team. Frankie Brandt and Ellie Small are the captains of the Alpine team this year and most deserving recipients of this award. Where we doubted even having a season, Frankie and Ellie persevered and rallied the team through our virtual dry land training. They kept it fun and challenging and included many underclassmen to help lead the drills. Frankie was there at every turn, encouraging, helping, and tuning skis for his teammates. Not having been a club racer previously, he still brought a wealth of knowledge, drive, and talent to the team. His commitment to personal excellence did not diminish his commitment to the team. Win or lose, he was back to the top giving feedback and tips and encouraging his fellow racers. We worried after a bad fall and a knee injury that he'd be out for the season, but not a day after he was back on crutches at the top of the hill, cheering and coaching and offering advice to the rest of the team. After a short recovery, he was a very strong presence at States and moved on to the meet of champions. Frankie handled victory and failure like a true champion. He compliments his passion for the sport by spending his weekends coaching younger racers. When I see the quote, in a world where you can be anything, choose to be kind, Ellie comes to mind. She is a ray of sunshine on a cloudy day always encouraging, kind, and non-judgmental. Her positive approach to life, the sport, and people in general is uplifting. She looked after the turn, the team in a maternal way, always encouraging and cheering them on. A talented skier and humble athlete whose mantra was more like, let's have fun and push to do your personal best. We met Ellie coming back after an injury last season where she skied a little more tentatively. It was so great to see her confidence return for some aggressive improvements in her skiing. Both of these athletes were an integral part of the team scoring this season, but most importantly, a pure joy to have. These are the types of athletes that a coach loves to coach. No matter how successful they are, they still willingly take advice and feedback and work to improve their, their game. Congratulations, Frankie and Ellie. We wish you every success on the road ahead. They have some pretty big boots to fill and will surely be missed. Callie, Kathy and I are so proud of you all. 
Hello, I'm Peter Broy, coach of the Nordic Ski Team. I'd first like to start by thanking Mr. Broody, Mr. Hetler, Dr. Carter, and the maintenance staff for all their support and help this season. That support has made for a very successful season in spite of the continuing challenges from climate change. A clear sign of this change is that last year, we never once skied on our entire trail system. And this year, we skied at home a total of just one week. If you're concerned about climate change, I believe that the Citizens Climate Lobby is a very good way to start to make a difference. This is a bipartisan effort to bring a carbon fee and dividend approach to our country's use of energy. To learn more about, go to clim citizensclimatelobby.org. We had a great team. It was 16 hardy skiers this year with nine seniors who came ready to race. By the end of the season, it was clear that they had made great strides and at our division finals yesterday, the girls took ninth and the boys took sixth place in the new 13 team challenging division two. And beyond that, most skiers skied to a personal best with three of the team qualifying for meter champs next week. In that race, Andrew, Andrew and Catherine will ski a long seven and a half kilometer skate race. This season, we skied at Proctor Academy, the Dublin School, Holderness, Great Glen, Beaver Meadow for a total of eight races. Pretty darn good considering the pandemic. Every race counted toward determining the end of the season, New Hampshire skiers. So every race was full steam. The boys won their first race of the season at Proctor. The first time a DS team has won a race in or out of its division in the dozen years I've been coaching. Beyond the meet of champions, Catherine qualified again this year to represent New Hampshire at the New England regional races next weekend as one of the top 25 girls in the state. Joining her this year will be Andrew LeBlanc and Sia Armstrong, who will ski in the U16 division. This year, our class of 70 awards go to Catherine Gage and Andrew LeBlanc. Catherine was captain for two years and she clearly took that responsibility very seriously, making my job that much easier. Andrew pushed himself all season long to make noticeable improvements and clearly was a team player determined to help the team succeed. It delights me to recognize these skiers this year. Thank you. Hello, Dairy Field. My name is Joe Conti and I'm the swim coach. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank Mr. Hetler and the rest of the administration for pushing to have a team this year. In a year where our home pool is currently empty, we were able to secure practice times, host meets, and successfully, and successfully compete versus other teams in person and virtually. I'd also like to thank the parents of the swimmers, who without their driving this season would not have been possible. We only had one diver out of eight swimmers at the start of this season, and our practices were at 6 o'clock in the morning and a majority of them were on days where virtual learning took place. Therefore, the parents had to wake up early to get their sons and daughters to practice and pick them up afterwards. So once again, thank you, mom and dad. I'd also like to start by acknowledging the three boys on the team, Jacob, Jared, and Mitch. Jacob, the experienced from in the group, bought a maturity to practice well, in, well above being a freshman. Mitch succeeded in the pool and would have been even faster than I ever was if he was not have to sit out due to COVID concerns. And Jared went from barely being able to keep his head above water to successfully be able to stay afloat and to complete a 50 freestyle. And to me, that makes a successful swimmer. For the girls, Prehi and Maddie were joys to have. These two swimmers demonstrate the main quality that I attribute to a Dairyfield Cougar, and that is responsibility. As a coach who is not in the building every day, I am constantly amazed by how responsible dairy field students are, and I look forward to Maddie and Prahi growing in and out of the pool over the coming years. Lastly, there were three straight qualifiers, Mia, Ava, and Molly. Mia was 11th place in the 100 freestyle, Molly was 8th in the 200 freestyle, and 10th in the 50 freestyle, and Ava bought home the bronze medal in the 500 freestyle and the 100 backstroke. For a girls team with only five swimmers total, we were eighth place in Division Two against teams, and there's teams much larger and uh, much bigger than ours. Also, for all three of these experienced swimmers, they led their team in spirit and energy 
as they were always cheering on their teammates, assisting new swimmers in different strokes, starts, and turns. At the state meet, they all stayed until the very end, cheering each other on even after their events were over. And lastly, the Class of 70 award goes to Molly Mahar. Molly is a coach's dream swimmer, as she is always the first one in the pool at practice and the last one out. She wants to keep swimming and enjoys practice just constantly. She's the, the, the penultimate, the ultimate swimmer, which you want a dream, a dream to coach. As the only swimmer who has been on the team with me the last three years, I know I can trust her and work with her in helping me communicate with the people in the building at Dairy Field, as well as representing uh, Dairy Field to other schools and coaches. I can't wait to coach all of these swimmers again, and hopefully some of you watching next season. Thank you and go Cougars. What a season. Um, we were hit with the COVID bug. We were shut down for two weeks, but the kids still um, worked hard. Um, they worked on their own during the two weeks that they weren't um, in quarantine. So they kept their conditioning up. Five o'clock in the morning comes pretty early for a lot of these kids. Um, I thank the parents for getting themselves out of bed to get their kids to the rink. Um, it's a big sacrifice, but as hockey parents, we know that. Um, there's a lot of tradition with hockey. Five o'clock in one of them practices. Um, playoff beards, superstitious, um, superstitions, I should say. Um, game hat, game uniform, trying to not break the mojo that we have. Um, we've been on a nice little roll these past two games heading into the playoffs. So things are looking pretty strong for us. Our um, senior leadership has been outstanding. Um, Cole, Derek, Ryland have been great backbones to this program. Um, <clears throat> this is great for them. Um, this is the first that we've um, been able to go as far as we have so far in the playoffs, not to knock our boat or to break um, any um, superstitions going forward, but we're looking pretty strong heading into the last three games of our season. So things are looking tr pretty good for us. Um, besides that, we're gonna keep plugging away, keep working hard, keep going forward with what we have happening for us because we have a great program.
So Cole Gersh and Derek Wagner are our class of 70 award winners for the season. Um, Cole pretty much dominates the ice. Um, he leads the team in points this season and last season. Um, coach even stated during practice that he's probably one of the strongest um, high school players in the state out in the ice. Derek Wagner, unfortunately, had his season cut short early last week when he broke his collarbone. Unfortunately for us, we're losing somebody who's a great contributor. He does the basics. He's the fundamentalist of the team. As you saw in the video, he doesn't have to score. He does the stuff off the puck that allows his line mates to score. And that's why the two of them together are in a dominant force. And that's why they both received the Class of 70 award this year. So we're off to the playoffs. Um, Continuing our run, feel free to follow us. Um, Live Barn has connections. Um, we're up at Everett Arena for the next couple of games. Um, so if you want to, join us there. Thank you very much. Good luck to the spring teams. Have a good day.